Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Can you think about a time when you were riding your bike and you applied the brakes? The bike slowed down, right? Well, did you ever wonder why? Here's the answer. There are forces around us that cause changes to the motion of objects. Let me explain. A force that opposes motion is called friction. It has the power to slow things down. Friction is present wherever two surfaces rub over each other such as using the brakes on a bike to stop or to slow down. When you use the brakes on your bike, the brake pads apply friction to the tires, and this friction slows down the motion of the bike. Think about riding your bike down a hill and how important friction is, right? Friction is a force that pushes against an object to slow its motion. When you're riding your scooter, for example, you drag your foot on the ground to slow it down or even stop the scooter. You may have used friction in your life without even realizing it. But why does friction even exist? Well, friction occurs because no surface is 100% perfectly smooth. Rougher surfaces, like grass, create more friction. Have you ever tried to roller skate on grass? It's pretty difficult. You might even trip and fall. But how about roller skating on the sidewalk in front of your house? Well, that would be easier because the sidewalk is smoother than the grass, and therefore there's less friction. You can see examples of friction all around you. When you write with a pen, the frictional forces between the pen and the paper cause some of the ink particles to stick to the surface of the paper. Have you ever rubbed your hands together to keep warm? The friction between your skin causes some of the energy of motion to be converted into heat. Before matches were invented, people used to rub two sticks together to start a fire. Uh, Just be careful if you decide to try that one out yourself. Now the next time you walk around, think about your feet pushing off the ground. You're applying frictional force. But you might want to be careful if you're walking on an icy sidewalk. It can get tricky because it's quite smooth and there isn't much friction for your feet to use as a grip. If you slip and fall, well, that's another force entirely. In fact, the force that pulls things down to the center of the earth is called gravity. That's why when you jump up from the ground, you fall back no matter how hard you try to stay up in the air. Wait a second. What about astronauts jumping on the moon and slowly falling down? Well, gravity also exists on the moon, but it's not as strong as it is on the Earth. That's why astronauts can jump higher and fall back down more slowly, because the moon is much smaller than our planet, and its gravity is less. Gravity is also what holds the Earth and all the rest of the planets in our solar system in their orbits around the sun. Uh, Thank goodness for that, or else our Earth would spin away from the Sun and float out into outer space. So to sum up everything so far, gravity is a pulling force that keeps us on the ground. Without it, we would all be floating around in the air. Now that might sound great, but can you imagine if there was no gravity on Earth? You wouldn't be able to run, lay in your bed, or even play basketball. Without gravity, if you kicked a ball, it would fly away in space and it would never come back. You can't see or touch gravity, but it's always there. In fact, no matter how heavy or light an object is, gravity will still pull it back down to the ground. You can climb up a ladder and drop a watermelon, a feather, or a ball. It doesn't matter. They will all still fall back down to the ground. Imagine for a second you have a cannon, and you shoot a cannonball straight up into the sky. No matter how high it goes, gravity will pull it back down to the ground. But what if you threw a ball away from you? Yep, gravity will also pull it back to the ground. The force of gravity brings things down no matter what direction you throw them. Wow, you know so much about forces now. But maybe something you didn't know? All of them, in fact, work together. Take a look at what I mean. Imagine you push a ball down a ramp. The push gets the ball rolling. Gravity pulls the ball down the ramp. Friction pushes back and slows the ball's motion. At the bottom of the ramp, the ball bumps into a wall. The wall pushes back on the ball and stops it from rolling forward. Well, there you go. All the forces we talked about do really work together in real life. Two new forces from today. Friction and gravity. 
The force that opposes motion is called friction, and it has the power to slow things down. The factors that affect friction are the roughness of the surfaces and the force between the two objects. When you drop something on the ground, it falls because of gravity. Gravity is a pulling force that pulls things down to the ground. I think that's enough about forces for today. See you in the next video lesson.